that second leg of the parlay right now. Again, both me and Corby were on, but then, or Corby and I were on, I should say, but the number we just didn't like, and we're going to get to that. Uh, minus 185 on the money line to the Padres and you Darvish, plus 165 to Gomber and the Rockies. Total of 11 and a half, a tiny bit of juice to the under at minus 115. Corby, let's start with you here. I had, you and I both, I saw this last night when I was filling out the sheet. You had already been on Padres double result. I was getting ready to type. I was actually happy. I was like, oh, I don't have to type the game out. I can just type in double result uh, in the pick section because Corby already put it on. And then I think you and I both had the same reaction. Ew, minus 130 on a double result in Coors Field will pass. But I do like the Padres here. I still, Darvish, exponentially better than Gomber, right? Yeah, I bet some run line last night, and that's what I, I saw the double result number come out 130, so I changed to a run line 120, and then that run line steamed up to 130. Uh, yeah. Just not worth it in, in, in a field as volatile as course. But the big thing for me here, and uh, the point to make, is that the Rockies have very little extra base hit potential. They are 25th in baseball on home runs. Uh, they're a team that doesn't have a lot of power hitters. Uh, they can only score runs based off multiple occurrences of hits, which means they really don't get the full effect of being at home. And you can see that. Like, they they 25th in baseball and home runs, yet they play in Coors Field. So I'm, I've am i been fading this Rockies team at home on, as big dogs, and I probably will continue to do so. I took Alex Cobb yesterday as a as a pretty big favorite on the run line, and they won in the bottom of the – or the top of the ninth, scored two runs, got me the, uh, the win there. So fading the Rockies anytime they're big dogs, take the other team, run line, and the assumption that there's going to be a lot of runs – um, one team is favored dramatically, and and I just don't think that the Rockies get as much benefit from that field as possible. Uh, but <clears throat> for the sake of the show, I didn't bet that. I bet the Austin Gomber. Let me see if I can find this number. Austin Gomber pitching outs at 14 and a half plus 105. Uh, that was minus 124 at Pinnacle this morning. So you were getting almost 30 cents versus Pinnacle. Uh, Pinnacle has since moved to plus 103, of course. Um, so you're still getting a little better, uh, but it's not a rush by any means. Caesars has this minus 117. So basically this is just a play comparing versus market plus 105 at BetUS. It's one of the better numbers out there. Uh, I will take Austin Gomber to get hit up a left-handed pitcher versus a Padres offense. The day off yesterday, uh, they've looked really rough. So it would be a, a really good spot for them to bounce back in it. And if they can show Gomber early, which in course is possible, can't imagine he stays out there too long. Yeah, and, and listen, a huge weighted OPS differential here. It's I think it's the second largest one I have today, base winner Gomber at 957. Darvish at 670. And look, there's no doubt that Darvish hasn't been sharp this year. Certainly not, you know, Cy Young type form that we've seen from Darvish in the past. But it looks to me like an ex like a huge pitching advantage here, Darvish and Gomber. Gomber's one of the worst pitchers in baseball, but for as far as I'm concerned, just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's just not very good. I was close to taking a Padres team total here, but then again, we talked about it. All these numbers got steamed up a little bit for the Padres, so it got a little scary to me. So I kind of like the approach you're taking here. Add it to a parlay, get some plus money. I know some people have problems with it, but a two-team parlay, it's just like if I came out here and took two double results, why the hell wouldn't I parlay them? Because I expect both teams to win anyways. Uh, tell us why you like the Padres here, B-Dub. I think, I think uh, Darvis is pretty good. He's He's got 21 strikeouts four walks in his last four starts. So that's that's pretty darn good. You look at his uh, his strikeout percentage, last 150, it's in the 83rd percentile. And compare that to Gomber, who's in the lower quartile, 9 percentile with a 15.3 strikeout percentage. Gomber also has a 1 percentile ISO power. And, and some of that's, like, affected by, by Colorado. So you got to give him a break a little bit, but he's still, like, you know, in the bottom five of all baseball. So I, I think we just have a huge advantage from a, a, a starting pitching standpoint. And then offensively, you know, the Padres have gotten a lot of crap lately about uh, their lack of production, but their numbers, like from a projection standpoint, are still good. These guys still got contracts based on, you know, deep analytics from a Padre organization. And I, I think those guys kind of know what they're doing. The, the analytic departments of most of these major league baseball teams. So, you know, you have this high payroll team versus a Colorado team that I, I don't know. I mean, we've argued about this on the show. I don't really see much difference between Washington, Kansas city 
Colorado and Oakland. I, I think that they're all bad teams. This is another bad team. And, and uh, you know, being able to get one of the top pitchers in baseball, you know, maybe the price is a little bit jacked up in, in, in Colorado, but I don't think so. I've got a price, you know, better than I, I've got. I've, I've got this game priced San Diego minus 300. So, you know, that's that's decent. And and I, I tend to shy away sometimes from Colorado games. I'm not going to do it here. You guys like San Diego for a reason and uh, backed off it. I think that there's a lot of people that, that are loving San Diego in this market uh, today. And, and But what, what, where was the threshold for you guys to uh, to cut this off at? I prob- I think if this was 10 cents better, if I saw a 120, I probably would have stuck with it. That's about where I want to, where I want to cut it off. I, and the reason Corby's absolutely right, just so volatile in course field. So it makes me, it makes me a little bit nervous when the, those big totals and a lot of runs, it just, I like the Padres today. I expect them to get it done, but double result minus 130. Just, it just doesn't feel right to me. It just felt a little icky on the inside and I, and I had to ditch it. Um, uh, what was your cutoff, Corby? What do you think? What should it have been? Yeah, f- for the sake of the show, I I tried my hardest not to bet anything that has already moved off market ten cents. So uh, it opened one twenty. I bet one twenty. Personally, I would have bet one thirty still, but uh, since it's moved ten cents, you're not getting the best of the number. For the sake of the show, I don't I don't want to be giving people something that's moved two point four percent basically. So uh, yeah. just laid off that. I, I still think that one thirty is probably fine. Um, but for the, and you have to think we're we're gonna have such a small sample size, especially me. By the end of the year, um, I, I'm at 40 wagers for the show. So if I if I'm laying a number that's moved 10 cents off market, then um, over a short enough sample size, like I, I'm not gonna win it. Even if I think 130 is plenty fine, uh, I I need some sample to show that. So I'm I'm only gonna play the best of the number, and there I didn't get it unfortunately. Stay tuned. Monday show, Corby Craig will have 32 show picks to uh add to, he's gonna have 32 picks on the show it's gonna be an exciting day uh and that or that padres team total i mean look at it over six and a half at minus 120 like that's just never going to happen for me uh but i do want to find a way to bet the padres today and get creative i like what base winner did here we're locking it in as the second leg of his base winner parlay braves padres plus 131 like the price i think it makes a ton of sense, and I like I like Darvish. I, I like the Padres today. The Padres, in my view, are in a great spot today. So, yeah. And Bradley Helston says they need to show me something before you bet them. I get that, but the, there's nothing more frustrating. I mean, losing's frustrating. You getting these bad streaks, bad beats are frustrating. But what else is frustrating is when you miss a team or a player by that one game. Right? You're getting a better price now. If the Padres were on a 12 12 game winning streak. And first place in the division, you're not getting the prices that you're getting today with them struggling. So it's always better to be ahead of of the curve in that regard than behind them. So waiting for a team to show you something, once they do show you something, you're a little bit late to the party. And you're not going to get the kind of numbers and the kind of value that you would get before. So it's certainly something to consider when you have that mindset on a team that they need to show you something first, which I get. There's plenty of times I do that. But it's frustrating when you're like, damn it, I missed I missed that train by one game. So it's just especially playing DFS, all sorts of ways where that can come back and bite you in the ass. Right. 